Located in Seminole, Boca Ciega Millennium Park is just one of Pinellas County's many wonderful parks, and its 182 acres support many kinds of flora and fauna in its seven distinctive natural habitats. The park also offers visitors a wide variety of amenities to enjoy, including spectacular views of Boca Ciega Bay from its 35-foot observation tower. Dedicated in 2001, the park features a time capsule near its entrance, which contains over 100 items reflecting life in our community as it was at the turn of the millennium. But Mother Nature also left a time capsule of her own buried in the park, the bones of a wide variety of animals that lived tens of thousands of years ago. The deposit of fossils was first discovered accidentally in 2007 by a local high school student who was on a nature hike in the park when she spotted what at first appeared to be an odd-looking rock, but turned out to be the tooth of an Ice Age mammoth. Excavations back then uncovered thousands of specimens from over 50 species that helped scientists fill in some of the blank spaces in Florida's historical profile. Fast forward five years to a project where paleontologists from the Florida Museum of Natural History in Gainesville returned to further explore Boca Ciega Millennium Park's fossil deposit with the help of students and other volunteers. The effort was led by Dr. Richard Holbert, the vertebrae paleontology collections manager at the museum. All right, we're doing a fossil excavation with a class from Eckerd College. Here in Millennium Park, we are excavating Ice Age or late Pleistocene vertebrates uh, that lived in this part of Florida about 15 to 20,000 years ago. Uh, we're finding uh, bison, llamas, horse, uh, several kinds of extinct large relatives of armadillos, and then uh, among the reptiles, lots of different kinds of tortoises and turtles. This afternoon, one of our uh, students from Eckerd College has discovered uh, at least one major limb bone of uh, the, an extinct species of bison. It appears to be the uh, radius and ulna, which are the major bones of the, the front leg. Uh, she's also found some other bones close by, which might turn out to be from the same individual. Uh, and so it's a very complete specimen. We're real excited. One of the questions frequently asked by the general public about the fossils that are being found is, are these dinosaurs? All of the animals that we get uh, as fossils in Florida are, uh, you know, we have many different kinds, fish, sharks, uh, reptiles, varieties, and lots of mammals and birds, but we do not get dinosaurs. <coughs> dinosaurs do occur in central Alabama and Georgia, Mississippi areas where they have the right age rocks. Dinosaurs in the popular sense are extinct reptiles that lived 65 million years ago uh, and then became extinct. So none of the surface sediments or rocks in Florida are that old. They're all much younger. The oldest surface rocks in Florida are about 30 to 35 million, so 30 million years after the dinosaurs. The fossils offer information, not just about the animals they come from themselves, but almost more significantly, in this case, the fossils help paint an environmental portrait of a time and place. Late Pleistocene or Ice Age fossils are very common and found throughout Florida, but what makes the Millennium Park site so interesting and unique is the relative abundances of certain species are much more common here than at other sites, and so we believe we are capturing an environment that we haven't seen before. It's an environment that was primarily open grasslands or prairies with very little to almost none of the forest-dwelling animals or the uh, aquatic animals of the time period. What we're finding are very interesting in allowing us to study the environments across Florida at this time period because as the climate changed uh, rapidly there were periods of, of warming and cooling and so we want to learn how the animals responded to the climate change back then and how that might predict climate change uh, responses in the future. Uh, so we need uh, a variety of uh, faunas where we have small animals and large animals together so we can study their, their fauna as a whole, study their ecology, and that's what this site is giving us an opportunity for the first time to study a grassland or prairie fauna from south central Florida uh, during the Ice Age. We're finding fossils of not just large animals like mammoths and bison, but things as small as a mouse or a salamander or lizard. 
And to a paleontologist or scientist, the small animals tell us much more about the environment because they're, they're sensitive to the environment than the large animals. And so we're very fortunate that this site produces both types, both size ranges of animals. Since the excavation was to take place on public lands, Dr. Holbert worked very closely with officials of Pinellas County to assure the project was properly conducted. Pinellas County has a, a, a form that you fill out when you want to do any type of research on county parks or uh, nature preserves. And so I worked with uh, county officials, got those forms, filled them out, explaining exactly what we wanted to do, when we wanted to do it, what we, you know, what we would do and how we would restore the land after we finished the project. And so after we submitted that form, it was a few weeks and we, we received notice that we were accepted and we were able to proceed going ahead with the project. Nobody is allowed uh, to just walk onto the park property and collect fossils or animal specimens or plant specimens. And so there's very strict regulations and rules about that. So we have to follow the guidelines of the county. Uh, so nobody should go onto this park or any other park in Pinellas County or any other county, Florida for that matter, and just start collecting stuff. The fossil dig offered a truly valuable opportunity to local students. The Eckerd College class has been great. Uh, they provide a lot of enthusiasm. Actual hands-on experience in something like this uh, may trigger uh, an interest in not just paleontology, perhaps some other field of biology or ecology, uh, which would be great. And so when they go on and you know write uh, applications for graduate school or something, they can put this down on their uh, uh, application as, as some experience, and that might help them uh, get into a certain college. The students and other volunteers assisted in the project under the close supervision of Dr. Halbert. Well, we've had two major groups uh, other than the students. We've had uh, a significant number of volunteers who work through the Florida Museum. We've had people coming from Alabama and Georgia and Florida. And then we've also had local residents of the Tampa Bay community who are members of the Tampa Bay Fossil Club who have worked with us and they have actually collected a vast majority of the specimens from the creek behind us. Uh, over 100,000 specimens have been collected over the two major digs, uh, and many of the identifiable specimens and many of the scientifically most important specimens were collected by club members. Dr. Peter Malin, professor of biology at Eckerd College, says the proximity of such a project right here in Pinellas County offered special advantages for his class. Well, this is really a, a great chance for my students to learn about paleontology firsthand by doing an excavation. And we're close enough to Eckerd College that we can just drive up here every day um, and work for the day and then uh, head back home at the end of the day. When I've done this same kind of a course in the past, we've worked at fossil sites that were farther away and the students didn't get quite as much opportunity to, um, to be in the field and then they wouldn't necessarily see all aspects of the, the dig. So for them to be able to see all the aspects of um, of how one does this kind of field work. So whether you actually did it in paleontology or archeology, span um, I think it's really great that they, they see the whole thing. So they came here and they saw the plot undug. They dug down about the first uh, 40, 50 centimeters before they started finding bone. And then we changed our digging technique and, and really slowed down. And now they're at, uh, they're at various levels in the dig, but they're finding uh, different kinds of bone why I joined this class is because this field work is a real once in a lifetime opportunity. Uh, this is one of the only classes that offered this and ever since I was a kid and ever since I saw Jurassic Park I was always enthralled with going out in, into the field and you know trying to recover the past. So I mean this was the closest you could get and it's absolutely wonderful. Well in this day and age you know it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world and a, to get out there and get jobs you really need to have experience in what you're working in. And not a lot of colleges will actually offer that to their students, which is what makes Eckerd so great, is that you can go in, work in the field, get that experience so you can get those internships and get jobs, which is really great in this day and age. And also just experience. I mean, maybe you don't want to go into paleontology, but to say that, yeah, I worked on a dig is just mind-blowing in a lot of sense. For me, I just love doing this. This has been my passion since as long as I can remember. And I try and incorporate this kind of field work with science because I'm a creative writing major. So I use this kind of scientific background to try and write stories where I can 
create environments for readers to be inspired to do stuff like this in the field. And I would love to just help get people interested in paleontology in a way where it's accessible to people. Authorized scientific research projects such as these can be a win-win situation for everyone involved. The county's very pleased to partner with uh, local universities and other agencies to conduct research on the cultural and natural resources that are protected by the parks and preserves here in Pinellas County. It's a beneficial relationship for both parties. The, uh, the researchers gain access to natural areas that have been protected in our highly urbanized county. And the county wins because we get information about natural and cultural resources that we would not normally be able to conduct due to limited resources. So um, it helps us guide our management practices in the future. And the um, researchers provide all of the funding to complete the project. The county is not providing funding, just support in order for them to conduct the work. It's interesting that in an urban county such as Pinellas County, we uh, fairly often discover these unique cultural resources. For example, in 2011, we excavated an 1,100-year-old ancient canoe at Whedon Island Preserve. Pinellas County has been great and very helpful uh, to us in digging up the site. They've provided uh, facilities to help us out and obviously just allowing us to uh, excavate right here on the county property in the park itself has just been a, a, a great opportunity to, to help not just the citizens of Pinellas County but throughout Florida and then scientists around the world to help us answer some of these important scientific questions. Digging operations at Boca Ciega Millennium Park concluded in January 2013, but work to analyze the specimens that were found will keep scientists busy for many years. Information from the 2007 dig is posted on the internet at the Florida Museum of Natural History's Vertebrae Paleontology homepage at www.flmnh.ufl.edu slash vert Paleo. Updates from the project will be posted as they become available. For more videos about our local history, visit the Pinellas County History Playlist on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash pcctv1. And as a final reminder, of course, we protect the natural and cultural resources, so anybody can't just come in and start digging for artifacts in the parks, preserves, and management areas. It's against the county ordinance to do unauthorized collecting of cultural artifacts, so uh, we work with the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office as well as um, park rangers in order to enforce the ordinances. There are penalties for unauthorized collection of cultural resources. Keep in mind that those penalties can include severe fines and possible imprisonment. Please help preserve and protect our cultural and historic heritage, and always remember that there is a right and respectful way to explore the past.